Greetings, agents. Are you familiar with the trolley problem? A philosophical exercise that challenges the viewer to consider how they will react when faced with an impossible choice. Is the life of an innocent person worth more than that of many? Is it even our place to make that decision? These are some of the questions raised by the anomaly we will be unveiling today. Item number SCP-89 Object Class Euclid C below Special Containment Procedures SCP-89 is stored in a special shipping container at Site-36 and monitored for locution events. Mobile Task Force Mu-89 Consisting of personnel with advanced training in linguistics, psychology, and tactical diplomacy has been established in order to respond to such locution events. Upon the occurrence of a locution event, Mobile Task Force Mu-89 is to translate and interpret the locution so as to identify the primary subjects of that triggering. Herein designated as SCP-89-8 and SCP-89-B. Then, execute protocol M8, which consists of the following steps. Transport SCP-89 to SCP-89-A's location and explain protocol M8 to SCP-89-B. And, at such time as SCP-89-B is prepared to voluntarily execute protocol M8, Render to SCP-89-B any assistance as SCP-89-B may request in connection with SCP-89-B, performing the following actions. Inserting SCP-89-A into the cavity, together with inflammable materials, such as oil, wood, or charcoal, then igniting them. The successful execution of Protocol M8 requires the voluntary compliance of SCP-89-B in a sober and uncareer state. Likewise, SCP-89-8 must be conscious and alert during the execution of the protocol. It is recommended that SCP-89-B be restrained, although not sedated. Following ignition, so as to avoid interference with the completion of the protocol, as the process is extremely painful and fatal to SCP-89-8. If SCP-89-B refuses to voluntarily execute protocol they made in accordance with the aforementioned specifications, MTF Mu-89 is to explain the prospective consequences of failing to successfully complete the protocol and make every effort to persuade SCP-89-B to cooperate. If MTF Mu-89's best efforts to so persuade SCP-89-B are unsuccessful, SCP-89 is to be redesignated as Keter class and protocol M9 is to be executed. Reference document 89-M9 The use of intimidation threats, or mind-altering drugs or intoxicants in an effort to affect SCP-89-B's free will, and any attempt to complete protocol they made without SCP-89-B's participation or voluntary cooperation, or otherwise other than as described, are strictly prohibited, since these measures invalidate the attempt completion of the protocol and are known to intensify the severity of the attendant type S event. It is also recommended although not required part of the protocol M8, to cause the execution of step 2 of protocol M8 to be accompanied by the sound of horns and percussion instruments, as doing so may mask the sounds made by SCP-89-8 during the execution of the protocol. Upon a successful execution of protocol M8, the related Type S event generally begins to abate within 7 hours. Description SCP-89 is a glazed earthenware statue, approximately 3 meters in height, depicting a winged, bull-headed humanoid with an open mouth. The front of the statue's torso is hinged and can be opened from the top to reveal a cavity, approximately 0.6 cubic meters in volume, and can be locked from outside. The rear of the statue bears an inscription in Canaanite language, possibly Punic. Doctor, translated and excerpted for the text, us. Nightmare of Moloch, Moloch the Loveless, Mental Moloch, Moloch the Heavy Judger of Men. The statue dates from approximately the 2nd century BCE. On infrequent occasions, sometimes separated by periods in excess of a century, the statue speaks. The mechanisms by which the sounds are made is not understood, and the mouth of the statue does not move. The statue's locutions are in a Canaanite language probably the same language as the inscription, 
and consists of the name or a description of SCP-89-8. A demand for protocol is made to be accomplished together with instructions for doing so and a description of the attendant type S event in figurative language. Each location event is followed within a period of 3 to 11 days by the commencement of a type S event meeting the description given in the locution event unless protocol M8 has already been completed. Each type S event is an epidemic, natural disaster, mass hysteria involving genocide or other massacres, or at the event involving extensive damage to property and loss of human lives over a period of time that continues until protocol M8 is successfully completed. In the case of each documented locution event, the attendant type S event, while significant, is limited to a geographic area that does not directly affect the CP-89-B. This has, in some documented cases, resulted in dependency of a type S event for an extended duration of time due to SCP-89-B's unawareness of SCP-89 or of Protocol M8, or to SCP-89-B's unwillingness to undertake Protocol M8 in order to arrest the type S event. For each location event, SCP-89-8 is a healthy, unblemished human infant or child between 8 months and 6 years of age, and the SCP-89-B is that child's natural mother. In all documented cases, at the time of the location event, SCP-89-A and B are each alive and healthy, and experience a strong bond of trust and affection with each other. Following SCP-89-B's placement of SCP-89-A in the cavity and the ignition of the inflammable materials, SCP-89-A will burn and be destroyed over a period of 2 to 5 hours. Addendum 1 Memo to file from Dr. Garcia While the role of SCP-89 in actually causing type S events is unclear, experience has demonstrated that the prompt and precise application of protocol M8 is effective in limiting the damage that they do. Dr. Patel has speculated that SCP-89 does not cause type S events, but merely anticipates them and provides a means to mitigate their effects. Addendum 2 A partial list of documented type S events that were terminated by means of Protocol M8, inclusive of documented completions of Protocol M8 that predate the Foundation's acquisition of custody of SCP-89. Follows Date of Locution March 21st, 1788 Description of Type S event in Locution event The flame shall consume their houses, yeah, and their markets, and their temples, and all of their dwelling places, they shall be destroyed. Type S event Fire in City of Outcome Protocol they made completed on day 29 after Locution event, 66% of city's buildings destroyed. Date of Locution December 2nd 1850. Description of Type S event in Locution event. The false prophet shall gather the multitude unto him, and cast them against their princes. They shall each of them be slain, and their fields made barren. Type S event. Large scale, messianic based, peasant of rising in. Outcome. Protocol M8 completed on day 1363 after the locution event. Massacres associated with uprising and its suppression and attendant agricultural collapse account for at least million casualties. Date of locution November 23, 1951. Description of type S event in locution event. The earth shall tremble, and the sea shall rise and be cast against the earth and the mountain shall vomit fire, its voice shall be darkness and death. Type S event, earthquake and volcanic eruption in Outcome, protocol then made executed within 31 hours of location event. No tsunami resulted, although geological models had anticipated that one would occur from a seismic event in the area. No fatalities. Date of location, November 7th, 1970. Description of Type S event in Locution event The rain shall scour the earth, and sweep away man and his beast, and all his works, the deluge shall take them all. Type S event Cyclone in Outcome 
protocol they made executed on day 49 after the cushion event. Casualties from flooding, disease and starvation estimated at 1000. Date of location, April 4th, 20. Description of Type S event in the cushion event. Type S event. Outcome, ongoing. Protocol M8, not yet executed. End log. Once again, the SCP Foundation shows that they are willing to go to any extreme to maintain their bias stance. Are we really to believe they lack the financial and technological resources to handle this threat in a better way? Is playing along the sick game of a capricious deity truly the best way to avoid catastrophe? What we can do is keep resisting their egocentric methods and hope that we can make better choices in the future. Help us by leaving your comments and suggestions below. I am Viros Anonimo. we are the GOC, and you have been informed.